Welcome back. After the news of Inyobong Umaran's killing became public on Sunday, different people started sending tweets of missing persons across Nigeria. One of the supposedly missing persons is a lady called Munachim Chukuma Onya. And after, of course, news of her also being uh, declared missing broke, people started wondering if she is truly missing or if she decided to go missing after defrauding people to the tune of 1.1 billion naira. It was also around the same time that the protest uh, against Maxwell Odum's MBA trading and capital investment was reported. A security expert and founder of uh, Chive GPS, Namdi Chive, is joining us from Abuja this uh, morning. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chive, for stepping in. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. We, of course, um, are once again having a conversation on uh, funds or people, Nigerians, being defrauded. It's not been too long ago we heard of MMM and how that ended. Uh, but it doesn't seem like a lot of Nigerians, um, you know, are, are shying away or moving away from these investment plans and these um, money doubling schemes. Uh, so let's start with why you think it, it continues to thrive in the Nigerian space. Okay, so um, what we have playing out in the past one or two years is, um, is the old time a money um, scheme, which we refer as Ponzi, whereby you take um, money from party A and um, you also take from party B. But you also take, use the same um, resources from party B to, to settle the obligations of party A. It, um, so um, MMM was so uh, successful, um, they were not selling any products. They built it around community assistance. So by the time MMM uh, went down, they, they had taken over, uh, you know, uh, unquantified billions. You can't uh, place a figure right now on what MMM took from Nigerians. So a lot of people, you know, saw MMM as um, a, um, began to mirror the, uh, the, the structure and the and the, 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 the means that which with MMM used to flick Nigerians of billions. For instance, after MMM collapsed, there were similar schemes that you know, came along. But after that, some Nigerians who are in the agriculture sector and also um, you know, felt that they needed to democratize the access to agri investment. So somebody set up a website and um, began to mobilize crowdfund uh, resources from Nigerians in, in, uh, in exchange for, for profit. And people invested in them and got some returns. But, but uh, several others you know, saw it as a way to come into that sector, be it in the foreign exchange uh, sector, you know, trading online, be it in the cryptocurrency um, uh, sector trading, so, um, and what they promise is usually outrageous, you know, in terms of uh, what they are supposed to pay you as a return. It goes from 25% to 75%. And um, I, I, I blame Nigerians uh, a lot for it, but I also blame the regulatory authorities for not coming in to stop these people at the early stage. My, I, I used to be a former... Uh, a banker, and I left banking in 2017 to set up uh, uh, GPS because while I was in the bank, a lot of fraudsters walk into the banking halls, present you with fraudulent um, documents to access facilities. So when you're also doing a background check on those who want to give facility, you discover that their ways are not um, their ways are not uh, are, not, are not clean. So Nigerians uh, had no means to verify the identities of some of these people behind these fraudulent schemes. Somebody sets up a website, you know, take pictures, um, say, for, say in the agriculture department now, some people go to farms, maybe Obasanjo farms, take some pictures, put on their website that this is their farm, you know, plantain, um, uh, poultry, um, cassava, and they tell you, put money into it, six months, 12 months, they are going to pay 25% at 5%. And the economy is uh, in a terrible shape. The treasury bill that used to offer 
90% is no longer doing that anymore. It's offering around 2% to 1%. So Nigerians are looking for ways and means to turn around their resources in a, in a shorter frame, in a shorter time. So this uh, agriculture or Ponzi scheme uh, advocates, you know, take, uh, took advantage of that. So when they set up this scheme, you, 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 you put your money in the first six months, they pay you 25%. And you are like, oh, this, this, this works. And you go about telling others to come and invest. So the second um, journey of that investment is what is always um, likely to end in, uh, in, in, in disaster for a lot of uh, Nigerians who are putting their money into it. All right. So it's really the, uh, the interest payment that is drawing Nigerians that they forgot to you know, carry a background check on some of these persons running okay. these scams. All right. Now that we know, you know, this particular issue, you know, my colleague asked how do we basically, you know, know these things? And you meant, or rather, why are Nigerians drawn to these Ponzi schemes? And you say high interest rates. You also mentioned that Nigerians have no way to verify these schemes. So from your experience as, you know, a business intelligence expert and in the banking industry, what are the markings of a fraudulent scheme? When somebody goes to a farm, like you mentioned, takes pictures, has a beautiful website, everything looks great. How can I, as an ordinary Nigerian, just be able to decipher that this is a, this is a scam, this is a fraudulent investment? What are the markings of a fraudulent investment scheme? Okay, good. Now, um, this, this has to do with uh, uh, financial analysis and, um, and also physical verification. Now, if I come to the financial analysis, a lot of Nigerians don't have that skill to be able to analyze um, sectorial investments. Or, you know, for instance, if somebody is offering you 10% on agricultural investments, and have you been able to make the analysis to determine if this investment is worth it? Let's take, for instance, if somebody um, is investing in um, in rice. What if the person is offering you, say, twenty five percent? Because these are what these people are offering, twenty five percent. So what is the risk in in, in 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 rice investment? There could be instances of flood. Have you you are putting your money there? What is the guarantee that if there is a flood, that this investment that you are going to get money back? Now they tell you there is a, there's an insurance because they paste um, insurance companies on their website. Have you interrogated the insurance, uh, you know, placed on this um, rice investment? They say the, 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 the insurance covers the farm. But is it on your capital or on your farm? So you have to ask the questions. If I'm giving you uh, five million, and you're giving me 25%. What happens in the event that this um, farm has issue? How do I get my money back? If you put your money in the banking sector, you go home and sleep because anything that happens, we thank God that CBN has been intervening since 2009 to safeguard the safety uh, of funds in the bank. That if the, any bank collapses, CBN comes in and intervenes. Or even if CBN doesn't come in to intervene, you have the National Deposit Insurance uh, Corporation that can pay you back your funds. So in the case of these schemes, they claim they have insurance, but Nigerians fail to interrogate that particular insurance. Does the insurance cover my invested capital or is it just the farm? If it covers your investment capital, they should be able to give you the, um, the, identity, the, the number of that insurance so that you can go to the insurance company and find out if this thing covers my capital in the event of loss. Now, when you come to physical verification of farms, you don't need to, you see, there, there are some people that, they don't know these people from anywhere. They just see them on Instagram and they just transfer 10 million without any iota of a check. And now when it comes to, when it comes to us to now, start tracking these people or to start looking for the identities of these persons. I are asking them to provide the logistics or the funds to be able to enable you, deploy people to the field to look for them. And they start telling you they don't have money or they start even asking you that want to help them. What is your track record? You know, So Nigerians don't carry out any um, 
background check in terms of um, the identity of these persons, uh, what about the insurance? The 25 percent that you they are offering you, have you have made the analysis within the sector? All right, to see um, if Namdi. Uh, let, me, let me just ask. I mean, I think you, you're making strong points there. You know, but for, for a lot of Nigerians who are not educated enough or are not financially intelligent enough to, you know, go through all these checks uh, to find out, you know, some of the things that you've mentioned, what are the most basic red flags that, you know, can be pointed out to anybody who tells me that there's some investment plan that will give me 25 or 30 percent if I put a million naira? Now, the red flag should be the interest rates that they are offering. Because um, within the investment space, there's no current um, you know, uh, product or services that can give you even 10% in Nigeria today. Because the economic space is so uh, um, restricted that people hardly make uh, margins on their, on their investments. So, my advice to Nigerians is, if you don't know, um, if, you, if you have a million, if you have 500, even 500,000, you don't really know how to, you don't um, have a means to, on your own, independently confirm the identity of this person, because character matters. When I was in the banking sector, before we give you a credit, we have to investigate your character. Your character is even more important to me than your capacity to pay in terms of your collateral. So you need to look at the, the, there is a public intelligence out there. Some people that defrauded persons in the past, uh, you know, their, their information is out there in the public. So you can, you, you, you can, not, you can check online for the, the character or the past um, history of these persons. If their history is, is dodgy, don't put your money there. If you cannot make the analysis of the investment within the sector to see if that in five percent is possible, kindly call up an expert. If you want, if you are, if you want to put one million to to give to somebody that you don't know because it's only on phone call and on Instagram that you met this person. What does it cost you to you know pay an expert? It's not an outrageous sum of money. You can pay an accountant a a little token. Or a friend, call up a friend within the investment space to tell you there are a lot of persons on Instagram and on Twitter who are investment analysts and who are also each time they give out these uh, investment tips. You can you can send them a DM. You can call up them to say, can you help me to make analysis of this investment? Okay. So I so not go out on their own to just put money into schemes that they don't know about. All right. So, Unnamdi, let's say, for example, somebody tells me about an investment and I see that the returns are very high. So I, I suspect that maybe I check online and I see that this may be a scam. You know, sites like Nairaland, you know, enable people speak openly about things like this you know and yes. one one tip i need to share that I, that i've used you know when you're suspecting something like that put the name of the business put the le the word and in capital letter and scam in small letters so if that business yes. name and the word scam appears you know in the same sentence within any online database to come up so moving on from there if you find that or you have an idea or an inkling that this might be a scam what should that person do? Report to the police? Is there anything that they can do to prevent other people from falling into that scam or to, you know, expedite investigation into it? What I advise Nigerians to do and what we intend to do as a, a, um, people, a stakeholder within the background check space is to, uh, once we carry out any background check on these people and or if any, any Nigerian has carried out background check on them, is to write uh, the regulatory authority, like the SEC. SEC, CBN, and some other authorities have the sole authority to license people to come into the public space, to mobilize funds from people and pay out interest. If you are not um, licensed by SEC as an asset management company or as an, uh, an investment company, you know, you, you don't have any business investing, in collecting money from people. So it's fraudulent, and those persons should be reported to SEC, and you can okay. post it online that these people do not have um, the requisite um, uh, investment uh, um, licenses right, to trade. 
um, finally, if you can do this in 30 seconds, because we need to wrap up, I want to know if there's any hope for those people who have uh, called out uh, Muna Chim and uh, the other uh, guy, Maxwell Odum. Is there any hope that these people will get their monies back? What I tell these persons to do is to, there's a hope that we'll get their money back, but they need to um, not to rely on the government, the government infrastructure to help them to get this money back. They need to engage a serious legal um, attorneys or, or similar companies that can facilitate the process of going after this person because they mobilize a lot of money from Nigerians. They, they need, the way they crowdfunded money to these companies, they need to crowdfund resources within themselves, no matter how little, engage an expert to start going after these people on their behalf, anywhere they might be, whether in Nigeria or outside of the country, they can do it and they'll get their money back. All right. Thank okay. you very much. So basically you're saying if you, if you detect uh, that a company is false is, or is a scam, you can report to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, I, I hope we can be able to do that online, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. They have their Twitter handles online. And you can also write the EFCC as well to flag these people as, uh, as uh, unauthorized companies. Okay. All right. And Nigerians also need to be very watchful, you know, of uh, schemes that promise you very high returns in a very short time. So thank you very much for all the business advice. Mr. Namdi Chife, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So just to repeat what I said, really, I find that this works all the time. You need to ask questions. I, I speak to young people and they say, oh, I put my money in an investment. And you ask, what's the name of this investment? It's one name that you've never heard of, mm. no track record. Or you put the name of the business, let's say it's XYZ Limited, XYZ Limited in small letters, the word AND in capital letter, A and in capital letter, then maybe SCAM. If anybody online has had a, you know, a bad experience with them, you, know, they, you would find it online, especially on platforms like Nairland, like I mentioned earlier. So we do need to uh, ex exercise that due diligence and not just rush into things because, you know, I want to invest, I want to invest. I know lots of investments that people have lost money. They will tell you, you know, they went to the company to protest. Some people even stole computers and, you know, yeah. equipment from the company. But that would never give you your money back. You're not a retailer. Where would you even sell that? So that's yeah. not even, you know, part of the question. So we should be very, very watchful. Like I mentioned yesterday, even when financial experts give you financial advice, they will tell you to consult and not just, you know, jump and plunge right into it. And I know it's stop you know, open on money doublers. Uh, those things only happen in movies. Yes, I'm telling you. And, and regards uh, this case of Muna Chim, I really hope she's, she's safe. Because I really, really hope she disappeared because of this money. Be and I say that because the spate of kidnapping these days is just alarming, you know? So if she's safe, she decided to disappear, thank God she is actually safe. Then we can now concentrate on finding her and getting their money back. But if it's a case where someone has kidnapped her for bad reasons i mean that that would just be terrible and it really makes me ask why will the p parents and siblings wait until 10 days before yeah. they sound the alarm that she's missing so it there really is, is suspicious is that a red flag? on yeah, its own you know good thing she can she has enough money to pay back ransom that's a joke anyway stay with us <laughs> oh my god uh we'll be back and of course we're going to be talking to the INEC uh, commissioner next stay with us